three. Welcome to another Goody Reader review video. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. And today we're very excited to bring to you a review video of the Amazon Kindle Fire. This is uh, the brand new tablet and the only Android tablet from Amazon. Check out uh, the box there. Let's give you some hardware specs before we give you the 360 view of the device as well as uh, give you an overview of the software and all of the, the ecosystem features. It's a 7 inch multi-touch display. It actually has a Gorilla Glass which makes it, um, you could drop it, probably won't crack. Gorilla Glass is one of the most uh, stable and uh, robust uh, screens that you can have. Uh, 1024 by 600 is uh, the resolution. It'll display 16 million colors. It's running a moderately current version of Android with Android 2.3. It has a dual core 1 gigahertz internal processor, 512 MB RAM, and 8 gigs of internal storage, and there's no way to actually expand that via SD or micro SD. A connectivity is Wi-Fi only, and it does support uh, a wide array of uh, Kindle formats. It, it supports the new uh, Kindle Format 8, uh, text, PDF, Mobi, and so on. So you could sideload in your own books if you connect it up via the micro USB adapter. So Peter here is going to show you the hardware features uh, of this device. All right. So this won't take long because, as you see on the front, there are no physical buttons, unlike devices such as the Nook Color, you'll see a home button there, or the iPad, you'll have an Apple button. So let's move on to the side, there's absolutely nothing there. Move on to the right side, there's absolutely nothing there. Move on to the top, you have very nice uh, stereo speakers. That's a good place to put them, I'm glad they put them at the top instead of flat on its back. Moving to the bottom, we have a power button, a micro USB slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and that is it. Moving on to the back, it's a nice rubber backing, so it's nice and hard, nice and sturdy, you're not going to drop it, it's got good grip. A lot of the interaction with this, if not most of it, is software driven because there are no volume buttons, lock buttons, um, uh, uh, zoom buttons, anything really. It's just they got basically one button on the entire device and it's the power button at the bottom. Other than that, you're going to be doing pretty much everything else on the screen itself. Hardware wise, it looks very slick. Um, it may not have uh, the type of uh, hardware that the new Nook tablet has. The piano black makes it look very sexy and sleek. And I think that's what they were going for without having all these buttons sticking out because they're really going for such a clean look that having all these buttons everywhere would kind of make it asymmetrical and it wouldn't look as clean as it does. Yeah, and I'm a huge fan of the speakers on the top. Oh, yeah. So many devices we review have them on the back of the device and so if you're if you're laying in bed at night like uh, the Nook uh, tablet does, it's all muffled and you can't really hear it. And that's why I've been such a huge fan of the Apple iPad because the speakers are on the bottom of the device. So even if it's laying face down, you're not getting any type of muffled sound. And that's really, you know, that that wins me over listening to podcasts, laying in bed at night, and I could really see myself loving the Kindle Fire over the long term because no matter how I hold it, I'm never going to be holding my hands muffling the speakers. So that that that's a win over my part. So this is the home screen, really, of uh, the Kindle uh, Fire here. You can see that it almost has like a 3D-esque uh, display. You can check out books on your shelf as well as uh, recently loaded apps that you have done. It seems pretty fast so far in uh, what we've done here. Uh, with the Ca Amazon Kindle Fire, you get one month Amazon Prime. So you could, uh, you know, uh, watch videos on demand. You get a whole lot of bonus features as well as free shipping. This is uh, the new stand. So this is uh, the cloud version as well as the device. So we don't have anything on our shelves, but we can also go to the store here. And you can get magazines. You can get newspapers and a whole lot more. So you can, uh, you know, buy current issues and things like that. It's as easy as clicking on buy current issue. 
we live in Canada right now. So the Amazon Kindle Fire is a lot of the features are uh, incompatible with uh, anybody living outside the U.S. We will be filming a, a follow-up video uh, telling you how to get around all of these features. So uh, check out our YouTube channel, check out our uh, blog, so, and we'll give you a full review on uh, how to get around these issues and um, everything else. So you can subscribe to newspapers, and magazines, and everything here. I kind of dig this whole interface here. I really like it. Yeah, it's slick. You can click on books and see uh, books that you have. So if you have purchased uh, books with any of your Amazon account, all of your books will be imported in here. Uh, let Peter, why don't you show them some of the features that are found in, in terms of uh, tailoring your ebook experience the way that you want. All right. So what you would do, uh, as you see, there are no buttons. There are no settings buttons. Um, or any right clicks or anything like that. So what you want to do is just do a center tap that brings up the settings at the bottom. If you tip the if you tap the double A button, you have all of these font style uh settings here. You can see you go from very small to very large. So we'll keep it at the middle for this test. We have line spacing, you can make it go in very tight or you can spread them out if you're having trouble uh continuing once you get to the end of the sentence. You can increase the margins so that they're gathered right in the middle like a magazine or a newspaper article or you can make the most out of the sorry you can make the most out of the screen real estate you have by spreading it out. You have color modes so if you're reading during the day obviously you know you'd want it nice and vibrant. When you're reading at night you want it a little bit darker or if you're having trouble seeing you can turn it to kind of this uh, beige butter kind of uh, setting so that it's easier on your eyes. Now if we move over from font style to typeface and we click that, now you have all the fonts you can choose. You can choose Cecilia, uh, you know, I can't, Trebuchet I guess, um, yeah just you know, about eight or nine different fonts. So uh, it gives you a lot of customization to really make the e-reading experience what, it, what you want exactly. I mean a lot of tablets and e-readers don't have many font settings but you know this gives you the choice to use them if you want to. Yeah, totally. So, uh, of course, can you read it in uh, landscape or a portrait mode? I mean, we're, we're in portrait mode now, but you can see that it switched to landscape uh, pretty quickly. Now, we were testing recently the Nook Color tablet, and we noticed that when you turn from landscape to portrait, it doesn't go nearly as fast as this. I mean, look at that. It's very quick. This is iPad quick almost. Yeah, that's hella quick. I'm I'm a huge fan of, of that right out, right out of the gates. So this is the the ebook experience with a book. Uh, do we have any uh, magazines or newspapers loaded on here? So let's go to books and oh, I'm sorry. I did put them in documents. Here we are. Uh, when I loaded the device, uh, when I loaded the when I connected the device to my computer, I had put items onto the directory's documents where everything would be held for reading at a future date. So here we are with um, Asterix. This is a popular um, graphic novel comic book series. You can see that uh, this is a side-loaded uh, graphic novel we put in here. It is perfectly formatted. We did not do any formatting ourselves prior to this. We simply dragged and dropped. You see it's pretty much unreadable at this distance, but you can very easily um, pinch and zoom it renders itself and it's as clear as reading it on a piece of paper. I mean, it's absolutely just beautiful. The colors are vibrant. It's, if if you're if you're really involved in your graphic novel, you you won't ever even notice you're on a tablet. It's just very it's that good. And this looks like a scanned version. So, uh, of course, if you have like more uh, like a higher quality version you might get like a little bit better experience but you can see that everything has fit to width so uh, you don't you don't really have to like mess around with any reflow settings like you would on a typical e-ink uh, based e-reader uh, with this magazine do you have any other options via long pressing or anything like that to well, uh, change the experience well you do have this awesome setting it's the back button that's about all you get with uh, side loaded PDFs and comics at this point Okay. How do complex newspapers look? We loaded in a PDF newspaper. It's a European newspaper, and uh, you can see the colors are very nice. Um, they're it's it's very it's laid out much like a newspaper would be. 
a very small font but still very easy to read once you pinch and zoom it's I mean oh yes uh, you can you can tap the sides to change pages or you can pinch and zoom unfortunately with the PDF viewers on most color e-readers there aren't a lot of whole there aren't a whole lot of reflow or reorganization options much like you'd find on a pocketbook uh, 902 or 912 where it would chain you can really customize the PDF experience this is more of a PDF viewer rather than you being able to go in there and you know changing the text so that it'll fit or reorganizing it into four columns or a grid this is mostly just a viewer but it does do a very good job of doing so yeah I mean you can see the pinching and zooming like super quick but with PDFs you kind of gotta like give it a second for the text to catch up so when you're like low like this and you go it takes like a second or two uh, for everything to like render properly uh, let's take a look at some uh, other content that we have here you have we've shown you magazines we've showed you uh, newspapers and ebooks um, this is your music experience so this is a song that we uh, loaded on here just to give you a sense on like how the music player and everything looks and with the two with the two speakers up top it is very loud and very clear you almost get a surroundy sound style feeling with this so um, and of course as I mentioned before software driven um, volume control because well there is no volume buttons on either side when we uh, did our side-by-side -side comparison of the Amazon Kindle Fire against the Apple iPad, the speakers on the Kindle Fire actually blow the iPad away. Uh, even with uh, the iPad EQ to like the max, because these are stereo speakers, you actually get pretty solid volume. And I was actually kind of impressed about uh, done to the max there really wasn't any uh, you know we often when you have a PC and you turn up to the max it's you it's, it's all muffled and distorted you never really got that with this no. so I, I was a huge fan of like the sound quality with this uh, versus pretty well any other device because uh, even the Nook tablet has a single speaker yes. uh, Apple iPad single speaker this has dual speakers yeah exactly uh, we've tested this both with uh, external audio and internal audio via the uh, headphone jack and it's just it's absolutely amazing I mean that's what Amazon's gearing this towards is a multimedia tablet so uh, the sound definitely is fitting yeah so audiobooks music uh, you're gonna be very happy with the sound quality uh, in here and I know with my devices I listen to a lot of podcasts especially late at night and I never really use headphones I'm always using the onboard uh, sound so it's nice to be able to have uh, better sound options so uh, we're looking at the web experience here this is something I really like that Amazon did I just clicked web and already you have Amazon Facebook Google Yahoo YouTube Wikipedia Twitter Craigslist LinkedIn everything that you know one of the, some of the top 20 sites in the world just right there at your fingertips most things that people would just type in anyways so they give you immediate shortcuts that I really like considering it has some of the world's top sites I noticed a good ereader.com was uh, lacking from uh, the built-in Amazon bookmarks so it looks like uh, LinkedIn is slow, is uh, edging us out uh, by just a little bit uh, so hopefully uh, in a little bit of time we'll uh, have that. So uh, this is uh, the web browsing experience. You can see that we're on a Wi-Fi connection. It loaded up pretty quickly. Pinching and zooming very fast. Why don't you scroll all up and down the page fairly quickly see how it does. So this is where uh, the dual core processor and uh, the RAM comes into play. There really isn't a lot of lag. You can pretty well continuously scroll and there really isn't a lot of rendering pinching and zooming is pretty fast uh, how do you, how does embedded YouTube videos look why don't we uh, check that out because obviously a uh, YouTube is a, a huge factor with uh, web browsing and stuff like that so we can uh, check out how that experience looks on this page is pretty well 30 videos so it takes a little bit to load So this is uh, an embedded YouTube uh, video. We've just tapped it to go to full screen mode. This is uh, a product review of the new, uh, this is the new uh, B-Book e-reader that we just did. It's uh, the Club S. 
So again, if you want to see uh, other review videos, of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash good e-reader. So we've checked out a lot of the things here. How do uh, video look? Well, we have um, part of uh, the Kindle Fire is, like I said, you got one month of free access to Amazon Prime. You can get a lot of TV shows. You can buy. You can uh, rent them for free. So there's uh, a lot of content here. Again, a lot of this stuff is USA only, but you can uh, watch uh, some of the previews and things like that. So it'll give you a sense on, on how the, the videos look. Dennis Hopper is such a nefarious villain in Speed, and uh, I would say if uh, you haven't watched Speed before, it's worth it to check out Keanu Reeves. Like all of his movies, has the whoa and like a lot of other one-liners. Uh, if you've seen Speed Two. I feel sorry for you. That was an abysmally horrible movie. Uh, but Speed One, and you know, you saw that there was there was a lot of content here. So uh, of course, uh, watching a lot of it is um, USA only at this point. But we can hit our library, and the, this is content that you could uh, sideload on your device or uh, stuff that you have purchased. Uh, let's hit. You know, this is pretty well. You can scroll and everything like that here. You actually have some settings here on uh, things that you can do. Disable HD purchase warning, IDs, and uh, things like that. You have an area for your docs, which we showed you uh, before. So we're going to hit the back button. And this is the apps. So these are the apps that, are, um, that have come bundled with the device. So email, Audible, Pulse, Facebook, IMDb, Amazon Shop. So this is just purchasing, you know, whatever from Amazon. So hitting the store actually brings you to the Amazon App Store. And here you can get a lot of uh, free things. Netflix, uh, Hulu Plus, this is more or less like the first page. Uh, Amazon App Store does a pretty good job at giving you a free app of the day. Usually it's a paid app, anywhere between 99 cents and $10, and they give it to you uh, for free. So it's a cool way that you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, get apps that you would normally have to pay for. I really like the way that Amazon presents their app store on Amazon Kindle Fire. They actually just revised their app store and uh, made it look a lot better for the Kindle Fire. So uh, just in the last week or so, Amazon revised their Android app store so it's more touchscreen friendly. It looks way better on a 7-inch device. You have a lot of different genres here as Peter's showing you. Uh, a lot of the most popular Android games. Uh, Amazon is very uh, finicky, as it were, um, letting only higher quality apps uh, get into the store. Now, here's actually something very peculiar that we've just noticed. Amazon Kindle Fire is a very closed device. If you were to use your PC and go to the App Store, you would notice the Kobo Reader, Barnes & Noble Reader, uh, Eldico, a ton of other uh, e-reader apps. But when you actually search for those apps on the Kindle Fire, none of them appear. And I find that very interesting that Amazon is uh, discouraging you from installing third-party apps on your Kindle Fire with your Kindle Fire. But you can check out you know, if you don't believe me, check out your PC right now and you'll notice Kobo there. But if you search the App Store for Kobo, if you were to spell it right, <laughs> it's uh, nowhere to be found. And I find this very, very odd. But it is Amazon's MO, <laughs> more or less. So we have pretty well showed you everything that comes on this device. You can see that our web page is here. So this is a, the our Goody Reader website. All of the most recent things that you did here. You know, everything from the uh, the pictures and everything else. 
So this is our gallery. This will be like the last thing that we show you. I think this was our trip from Computex in Taipei. Yes, it was. This is uh, right outside the Regent Hotel in the main city of Taiwan, which is uh, Taipei. That was a great McDonald's we went to, wasn't it? Yeah, they had uh, they had those nuggets with Chinese sauce. They called it. Yeah, that was about. That was really good. Of course, pinching and zooming. Uh, pictures do go from landscape to portrait mode, as I recall. Uh, slideshows and things like that. So uh, overall, Peter, what are your impressions of the very eagerly awaited Amazon Kindle Fire? Now, a lot of people have been waiting a long time uh, for this device. Uh, it's been kind of teased all over the internet for about six months, and then you know, roughly about like a month and a half ago, it was officially announced. And you know, here we have it. Uh, it's available in the USA only, but if you live outside the U.S., of course, uh, you can get it at shopereaders.com who are pretty much the only store out there who will ship internationally at uh, any postal speed you wish and they will ship any country they uh and they offer um, the Kindle Fire along with great accessories and screen protectors. All right, so my impressions is I really like the Kindle Fire. I mean, um, it's sleek, it's sexy, um, it has a lot of content. This is more being billed as a multimedia device. It's being billed as something to watch, Netflix, Hulu Plus, a lot of videos. Uh, it has a lot of integration with Amazon Prime for uh, renting and buying movies directly through Amazon. I would say that almost like the e-reading comes secondary. That's what it really seems to me with this device, that uh, the e-reading aspect is um, put sort of uh, number two and uh, the apps and like the movies and the music are almost like the number one hyping factor. Um, so I don't know how if I would use this as a dedicated e-reader as much as I would use it as just a very portable uh, multimedia device. Yeah, um, I do. I do like the device, but I entirely agree with you. They're really. I mean, look at the box itself. I, I, I see maybe two books on there, and everything else is a magazine, application, games, you know, TV shows. Uh, yes, it is definitely a, um, an entertainment device. And why they're doing that is because they have released other Kindles alongside of it. This was released at the beginning of the month. This is the Kindle, they're calling it. They're, then they moved on to the Kindle Fire and will now move on to a Kindle Touch. So that they're making the whole e-reading secondary is not a big deal entirely because they are also releasing plenty of other e-ink devices such as this one right here. This is a 2011 release of the Kindle 4th generation. But any, but uh, aside from the fact, the Amazon Kindle Fire looks great, uh, it feels great, does a lot of things. It's really fast, dual core processor. The only things I don't like about it is that there is no SD card. I disagree with that till the end of my life. I will, I will take that to the death. That this should have an SD card slot. You need an SD card slot to load your own content. I mean, I know people are. I know they're trying to keep people out of it by saying we're not going to let as much third party content on. But people are going to do it anyways. There's no harm in putting an SD card on there. Uh, yeah, no, I know I like it overall. That's about the only thing bad I can say about it. Yeah, I mean, the way that I see things is um, Amazon is kind of, they, they've been having a really solid bookstore for a long time. Uh, one of the big hyping factors is, say, children's books here or uh, magazines and, and things like that and Amazon is just starting to get into that. So uh, their ecosystem for magazines and, and kids' books uh, is spartan and poultry. They don't really have a huge uh, uh, content library for that sort of thing set up. They do have a lot of ebooks, and uh, the Amazon Kindle store is pretty well leading the charge in terms of the big six publishers being on board, uh, self-publishing programs, indie programs. Uh, so they have a lot of books, but their magazines and uh, kids' books uh, severely lacking at this point uh, maybe this time a year from now maybe it'll be developed a little bit more uh, but yeah we'll uh, come to that bridge as we cross it this has been uh, our goodie reader exclusive review video of the Amazon Kindle Fire 
and this is the very first Android tablet uh, by the company. Uh, stay tuned for further videos where we'll compare this against the new Nook tablet and the Apple iPad, Kobo Vox, and a whole lot more. So uh, set your web browser homepage to goodyreader.com, your number one source for e-reader and tablet PC news. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. Everybody take care.